Welcome to episode 60 of Unqualified Game Chat. I'm your host, Cesaro Lopez, and with me today is no other than the bold, the beautiful, the brash, oh, Spencer, the legacy. Hello, I heard you almost form a W. You almost said what? up, nerds. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It was yes. close, but I'm, you, say, you saved it. That was good. I, I don't like to fall into old habits, you know? Yeah, that's true. I, that's a good. I know that about you, actually. I like to learn from my mistakes. And Punk Rock is Ario. Yep, yep, yep. And never uh, the same thing twice. Never. Never. Unless it's, um, unless it's buying Bathing Suit DLC for a little too much. Yeah. Yeah, but you got to have some consistent features. Did you ever beat Nier Automata? Yes. You beat it? Like all the endings? Mm-hmm. Okay, I haven't. Oh, okay. But with that said, you know how there's like DLC for like, you get like costumes afterwards and you could buy it, but you have to beat the game to get to the DLC? Yeah. So I bought all that DLC <laughs> knowing yeah. that I had to beat it, but yeah. like also knowing that I didn't have time to beat it and still to this day I have not. Com- to this I have, day is, it's just out of your reach. I have, not, I have not gone to the true ending of that game. I feel bad. I need to return to it. I know it's, it's a great game. Ending. Yeah, it's great. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, you've played Drakengard. You, you know it's what, what's coming. But with Drakengard, the hipster that I am, mm-hmm. the Drakengard doesn't have that many fans. And then Nier Automata came out and kind of made me hate Nier with all like the cosplay and the butt stuff. And I get it. I get it. I've been a fan of the butt stuff for years. But then out of nowhere... Out of nowhere, everyone's like, ooh, butt stuff, you know? I, I, I sort of know, yeah. That's like, interesting. Like everyone, it's, I've seen it kind of go down a bit lately. Like, not as many people are crazy about Automata now as, uh, as uh, like, the couple years after its launch where you would see tons of cosplay, tons of people talking about it online, every Reddit thread. What's an underrated game? Dude, have you heard of Nier Automata? I wouldn't consider it underrated, though. I wouldn't either, but but it came up. Yeah, that's that's strange. Um, yeah, well, just that game in general. It's a, it's a good game, great game. I, I I know I need to beat it. I know. Yeah, uh, but you uh, think about it for a while after you beat it. It's that kind of game. But but my point is is that I bought all that DLC and um, mm. never had it, never accessed it. See, I'm the. Uh being the poor boy that I am, I'm the opposite where I go on the smash DLC page and I say, I wouldn't play as that character. So I, I'm not going to buy them right now. I'm only going to buy Sephiroth and Sora. <laughs> um, so, so I have, I have like fighters pass one because it had a ton of RPG stuff. And then it was okay. Sephiroth and Sora. I don't have Steve. I don't have, uh, you're not missing out on anything with Steve. I don't have, um, Pyra and Mithra because I hadn't played Xenoblade 2 yet. Uh, so I don't know who they are, but I'm sure I'll buy them immediately after because I got to play it soon. And uh, you're going to have to. Going to have to. Unless they, transition. If, if you're, if you're not going to play them, then you won't be in the conversation. That's true. And what are you going to do? What, what are you going to do if you're not a part of the conversation? If I'm not relevant, what am I going to do? I ask myself that question every goddamn day of my life oh my god that's why we get along so well yeah we both the, have a crippling fear of becoming a internet irrelevant yeah yeah and like the people who are relevant i'm like why are you relevant and then i and then i read their stuff and it's because they're very loud they are very loud. i've noticed that a lot uh recently where the most popular accounts are just very basic observations and, and loud opinions mm, mm, like man mm. i am totally having a bad monday and everyone's like oh shit i can relate to that yeah or, and then or they'll, they'll be like also this game everyone loves sucks yeah and then everyone's like yes they'll do some hot take like uh the dragon quest is better than final fantasy you know they'll do some like some hot take you know and then everyone yeah. and then everyone will start fighting over it and uh, it's amazing you- to me how consistently people on twitter 
fall for that. There'll be a terrible article. There'll be a terrible take and everyone will comment and retweet and link the article. Well, it's- how do you not know at this point? That when something is stupid, you either don't link it and talk about it or you just ignore it. There's this desire to have your opinion heard, even if you're screaming into the wind. And I and I understand it. I understand like we I could go I could go years in my town and never mention that I like video games and still like video games. And now you're going to introduce me to this online community of people that share or don't share opinions with me. And now I finally have a place to say it. And yeah. And, and I think that's like, it's tempting. It's, it's, it's so hard not to, especially when one of your friends jumps in or tags you and you want, you know, you want to be there, you want to, and and then once you figured out that they did it to you, then you do it to them. And it's just like, it's, it's, it's a, a slippery slope. The issue I constantly face is everyone will tweet about something and I want to make a snarky tweet like everybody's talking about this terrible article instead of just ignoring it. But then I go, I would be contributing to the discourse and doing mm. exactly mm. what I'm talking about. So I don't comment on anything. And then I don't either. <laughs> and it continues. I used to, I used to, I used to a while ago and um, like year, maybe like seven years ago, I was like really into like, being loud on Twitter and just waifu Wednesdays and stuff like that. And just, <laughs> just like trying to make friends in the community. And I made a few, a few lasting ones, but I can't, I couldn't keep up to be honest with you. I just, um, the press releases are coming in and I'm on Twitter and I just, yeah, I didn't like the, uh, yeah, I, I stopped going on Twitter for like two years, very peaceful two years. Mm-hmm. Like, in this industry you just you can't not be on twitter yeah you got if you're not getting hot scoops from nebel and wario 64 yeah then what are you doing what are you doing you're too late you're too late uh with that said we record this podcast every week post the podcast services on thursdays whenever the hell i feel like it yeah it'll be there guys you'll like it all right Okay. Yeah. Well, tone it down a little bit, Spencer. Tone it. I know. Oh, I, oh, it's 11:30 p.m. Where is it? It's coming. Sassy boy, Spencer. It's coming. Um, we live in different time zones. We have nothing to talk about today, Spencer. So I, 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 I brought some news that happened um, okay. to, that over the past week that we can kind of uh, dive into. Nice. Okay. Sounds good to mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. So something that I think you will be interested in oh, because you're kind of weird and you like weird <laughs> things. Oh, thank you. Uh, that, Sonic that origins. I love Sonic. I love and Sonic. it's coming out on what is it? June 23rd, 2022. I'm excited <clears throat> on all platforms. Yes. Um, it's Sonic one to three and knuckles and Sonic CD. Mm, mm, but you can play Sonic and tells in all the games I read and knuckles. Sonic and Knuckles. Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. Any of All them. three. The yeah. trifecta. The trifecta, the big three. What about, what's her name, Mimi? Amy. Amy. She's in the trailers, like, in the animated parts. Uh, I don't think she's playable because she wasn't playable in any of the Genesis ones. So did you ever have a crush on her? No. I, uh, my, my favorite Sonic game is Sonic Adventure because it's the one I played the most. She wasn't in, I didn't have a Sega CD when I was a kid. You um, never had a Sonic crush character? No, I didn't. I was never, I, I always, I mean, I have lots of cringy Sonic memories, but none of them involve wanting relations with any of them, thankfully. Wow. Are you really a real fan? That's what I want to know. Well, I mean, I did do Sonic's idle animation at school from Sonic Adventure because I thought it looked cool when I stood still. So I am definitely embarrassing enough to be a Sonic fan. That's pretty bad, man. That's pretty bad, but it's better than wanting to and, have sex. And I can only hands. imagine you doing that and you actually feeling like you're like really cool and wondering if everybody Dude. else sees you. That's exactly what it was. Dude. Cause I would do shit like that. And yeah. not, not that, not that cringy, but I would do shit. <laughs> not as bad as your shit. As, but, but I can, I, I can, I feel like I've had, I've done stuff like that before where there's I, a, uh, there's a family photo of me with my fingers like this, like knuckles. Like oh, it wasn't because you're doing the horns. 
No, it was to look like Knuckles because I just played his his section in Sonic Adventure. Wow, dude. Yeah, Sonic Adventure had a huge impact on my brain when I was developing, and that's hey, a bad thing. Yeah, it's not bad. It's it's not a very good game, but it's fun though. It's really fun. It's fun. It's a fun game. I remember it, it was the reason why I wanted a Dreamcast for sure. Yeah, it was. I got. I had two copies of it that were both scratched to shit, and I would spend forty five minutes putting the disc in, turning it on, closing the tray over and over until it would work. I would, I got like half an hour of TV time at the time. So sometimes I would get like 15 minutes maybe of playing Sonic Adventure and I'd have to explain to my mom. I, it's, I'm not doing anything yet. I'm trying to make it work. So, you know, my dedication to that game is unquestionable. I got to say. Mm. Hey. Mm. I, I do think that um People need it, it should be stressed that back in the day when you go to a retail store such as Target or Walmart, they used to have demo stations. Oh, demo that stations. You, of all the consoles and just like a few games that you could play. Yeah. Fuck, I had that I up to that. like the PS3 and then it was gone pretty much. Fuck, I love that. It's true. I uh same with uh, McDonald's. McDonald's had N64s and GameCubes. Why would they why would they take that away? Um I guess maintenance and upkeep and just like yeah. uh, retail space they were broken fucking at least half the time. Well, yeah. And I can imagine like the, the stores needed to be updated and they, need, I don't know, but that was such a good idea. And it still it's is true. because covers don't tell you shit about the game, but imagine, imagine being a retailer and selling demo space, you know, Yeah. You know, absolutely. And those convinced me to buy a lot of games or systems like the I didn't I didn't have a GameCube and I wanted one desperately when I played the little Wind Waker demo at Walmart. Yeah. I was like, whoa, same with the, even like when I was a teenager, oh, and I dude. played like infamous on the in a Walmart. I was like, I need to save them up for a PS3. No, Nintendo, Nintendo did it for for a while and mm -hmm. have like. While their E3 presentation was going on, I remember you could go to Best Buy and play yeah. the games that were the demos that were announced yeah. in, in the E3 presentation at a Best Buy. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, anyway, Sonic Origins is coming out. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. Um, it's a digital only release. How do you feel about that? That is a shame, which it, that's weird because Mania got physical copies. Was it, did Mania get physical <laughs> copies? at launch or before or after launch at launch because i got one of them wait what was the order i got because i got one for review i'm trying to remember if that was sonic mania with the add-on content or if it was sonic mania plus or whatever yeah if it was sonic mania plus or if it was just sonic Mania. because i remember to play plus i had to put in the disc which was annoying because I had the other one digital. So maybe that was plus actually. Um, but even then it got, it got a physical. So maybe somewhere down the line, Sonic origins will get I don't know. something. I'm um, excited to play them though. Cause they're the, um, as far as I understand, are they the Christian Whitehead Sonic mania team worked on these ports? So they're improved. Like his version of Sonic one is the best version because you can spin dash and it's functional and fun. So I'm a, uh, I'm excited. Plus those tunes. Gotta love those tunes. Yeah. Uh, so out of these Sonic, out of these Sonic titles, what's, what's your favorite? That's tough because I think there's only one real answer though. I think they're all pretty strong, but there's only one real answer. Is, is there, I can think of like three. Nope. Give me the one. Give me the one. Spencer. I think Sonic CD rules. That's what I was looking for, dude. Okay. That's what there I was looking go. for. I love Sonic CD. Other than the one, the tool, the workbench stage or whatever, I don't like. Yeah, but fuck that stage. Fuck that fuck stage. Fuck that stage. Other than okay. that, other than that, you know, Metal Sonic, Past, oh. Future, that's your rules. Dude, it's a fucking great game that yeah, not a lot of people got to play. It's true. I, I didn't get to play it until it was ported to like, like iPods. And then I played it on an iPod. And yeah. then I just emulated it after and played it. Actually, no, I played it on a I played it on a um, a Saturn like like a normal person. Oh, like a rich kid, like, like a, a rich kid. kid, like a fucking rich. I got kid. my Dreamcast at a garage sale, dude. Like a fucking rich kid with my Saturn Bomberman sitting right next to it. Oh, oh I wish. Listen, <laughs> I I 
I got a ton of Dreamcast <laughs> games at garage sales. I played Sonic Shuffle and Adventure and all the classics on from uh, scratched garage sale copies. So worked out quite nicely. I might you, you could have got them resurfaced. You know that that was the thing. I remember that was like a legendary thing at the time because my brother was like, I was at Shoppers Drug Mart and I got a CD fixer and I was like, can I fix Sonic Adventure? And I get the whole half hour. No, but you can't work. You, no, you have to go take them to a game store and have them do it. Yeah. I know I what you're talking about. Asking. Those plastic things and you put it in yeah. and you, you spin you the it, thing. It was can't... literally that. Yeah, I've got. And I thought those. that would fix Sonic Adventure. Oh, that's so cute. I, I, was put, a, I was a cute little kid. I, I used to say. put peanut butter. I used to put peanut butter on. <laughs> stop it. Don't laugh. You know at what? Me. I'm not don't even fucking, laughing at you. I'm fucking, laughing because I did something really similar. So I, I used to put peanut butter on my disc and I to clean it. Taste. Um, I flushed mine down the toilet sometimes, the disc down the toilet, because I heard that like. Yeah. Oh, because there were tons of websites where it was like, how do I fix this disc? And I just give you shit. So, so yeah. I read that it was toothbrushes because I tried to fix my Spider Man PS1 disc with toothpaste. Constantly that, over and over. I used peanut butter. Um, what else have I used? Alcohol. I've used it all. My spit. You had access to alcohol as a little boy? Well, the rubbing alcohol. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just pictured you like pouring gin on it. <laughs> no, I didn't know what gin was back then. I was a I was a nice boy. You were a good little kid. Yeah. Anyway, Sonic Origins. That's I can't wait. I can't, cannot wait. The all the the pre-ordered editions. Uh, give oh, me yeah, a, that's dumb. Give oh, me a you headache. You want this content? You want this content? You want this? I don't care. I just want to play Sonic CD, dude. Just fucking sell it for forty bucks. Just sell the yeah. whole thing for forty fucking bucks. But if you pay, what is this? Five extra dollars, you get difficult missions and and different modes and island camera for five dollars. What's that's gonna camera i don't know isn't the island, on the island, island menu island, yeah island camera on main menu you get a character like the option to spin the island i don't know what that means man that's bizarre all i can tell you is that if five dollars is the make or break for this extra stuff get the fuck out of here eat it sega just eat the five bucks and yeah, release the fucking game <sighs> it's like the 15th time you've re-released these games and i'm really excited for it but damn you don't need that five bucks, Sega. You don't. Um, okay. Something you're interested in. Moving on. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 gets a uh, July 29th, 2022 release date on Nintendo Switch. Now, can you remember any other game that got moved up like that substantially? When was the title supposed to be? It was supposed to be September. September. Yeah. Um, no. But I could, I could think that maybe um, I, I would have hoped that they would have tried to get more sales of this game in, release mm-hmm. it around the holidays. Um, releasing it in July is kind of scary, uh, just because uh, the way they're banking on summer holiday people. Yeah, but the the release schedule is so shitty, like. Like, I always feel like they they try to get in between quarters, you know, like these companies and they're going to release games that they don't think are going to sell good at certain times. But what honest- else comes out in July, July 2022 game releases. Let's see what it's competing with. Uh, I know right. it was at the same day as Digimon Survive. Yeah, which we'll talk about next. But yeah. that's insane, too, that 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 would even happen. Uh, um, let's see. Clonoa, live a live, live alive. Yeah, that's coming out that month too. It's it's gonna be a pretty cool month for yeah. for for our our readers definitely and listeners. Um, I don't know. I I just hope that Nintendo actually supports this game. Um, I, I hope so. I think they will though. I think the I think the Smash the addition of the Smash characters did a lot for xenoblade chronicles 2 yeah, um but um that's probably that's when the prices went crazy isn't it yeah because i bought xenoblade chronicles 2 and torna physically before the right 
at the beginning of the pandemic because I wasn't wearing a mask and I went in the store and no one was wearing masks yet. And we were like, should we be wearing masks? Uh, and I bought them. So that was like probably February or March, 2020. And I got them a retail price easily. So they must've been right after when, yeah, I, when they were announced. Cause they're selling the tornado edition for like 20 bucks at one point. And then, yeah. and something, something that happened. Smash bump is real and crazy. Um, yeah. And I just, the game looks great. Um, it's always scary releasing a numbered title because your sales are only as good as the people who completed the previous game. Yeah. Um, that's why trails kind of, I saw like are yeah. Trails in the sky or trails of cold steel or whatever. Um, that's why it's amazing that those games even get as much hype as they do when you know, like 80% of the people have not completed those games. Yeah. I don't know where to start with those games. Yeah. And I've played one apparently. Um, I reviewed one. I don't remember it at all. Which one did you review? Cold Steel? Let me check real quick. Okay. I'll just... Uh, uh, Cold Steel is a story about uh, some Trails students. Trails of Cold Steel. Trails of Cold Steel. Um, 2017, I don't remember anything about it. You don't remember Reen and his uh, group of friends? No, but how did I like it? Let's see. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. That's not a very good score. But... I don't know how much I played. I literally, you of all people know how many review games have come since 2017. Like the average person plays a couple games a year. Okay. We, we play a couple games a week. The game so, took, that game took me 85 hours to complete. Yeah. And I probably didn't do a full 85 because I was new to the profession at the time. And I was probably like, I need to hit the embargo. I, I only have two days. Well, uh, that game, that game it becomes repetitive because you just go on missions. You're you're at, at one point you're just reviewing the story. Yeah. And that's what kind of sucks about those games is that like, it's so subjective mm -hmm. to what these nerds feel should have happened in the story. And then what actually happens. So if you want something to happen, then, uh, and it doesn't, you get pissed off and now you automatically yeah. don't like it. The fans dilemma. Yeah, and Falcom fans are a bunch of fucking nerds, and uh, they'll they'll go hardcore. They shun me. They shun. They, me. they shun. You me. I didn't know the answer to one of their little shitty, dirty questions when I was in line at Anime Expo. Whoa! Yeah, they made fun of me. <laughs> oh my god, that's always the funniest shit when you're at like a convention or an expo, and people make fun of you because you're not enough of a weeb, and you're like. This is truly bizarre world because I've been made fun of for being too much of a, of a yeah, and now yeah. I'm not accepted in either circle. Yeah, yeah. It's always it's it's them. Sonic fans are a little toxic, but not IRL. IRL Sonic fans yeah. are just funny people. Um, Have you watched that? I fucking love the Kroby Cat video of the Sonic uh, anniversary event. Mm -mm. where it was going horribly wrong. There was terrible noise in the background the whole time. The sound system barely worked. They were sponsored by Totino's Pizza Rolls. And there's that amazing scene where the Crush 40 is singing Sonic Heroes. They're like, Sonic Heroes. And they hold the mic up to someone in the front. And he goes, oh, yeah, I have seen that. I have seen that. I have seen that. I have seen that. Like, oh, did, that. So, that is that the one where Sonic plays guitar or something like I that? I think so, yeah. So it's a good video. Yeah. It's a classic. Um, I love Sonic and I love the Sonic fan base because they can be crazy. We've talked about this before. They can be great. They can be crazy. It's fascinating. I love it. Yeah, they're they're funny. They're a funny group. Um, a little toxic online, but um, they're I, they're most comparable to the Kingdom Hearts fan base in that they're like, yeah, no, Sonic's weird. Some of the stories are weird and shit, and I like shit games sometimes, but you know, fuck if I don't love it. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. I like that. I like, cause, cause especially social media now it's so much like, Oh, you like, um, I don't know. Oh, you like Marvel movies. Oh, you don't like Marvel movies. Like Sonic fans and King of hearts fans. They're just like, I know the thing I like is fucking weird. It's the rules though. <laughs> and you're like, okay, cool. You know what? Fandom never lets me down. What fandom? The Digimon fandom. It's and true. Digimon Survive is coming west July 29th on all consoles. All consoles. And we have waited so long. I'm very excited about this. I just want to cry, man. I do too. 
especially when that music in the trailer plays because you oh. can tell sad shit it's gonna happen to that music oh man some someone's gonna die that's someone's all i'm gonna can. die or they're gonna leave the digimon at the end like at the end of adventure adventure subbed when they leave at the end in the dub and it goes hey digimon hey Dig-. it's not that sad no um but when it plays butterfly you know that's that's sad <laughs> did did you were you excited when uh patamon did you evolved into angelmon i was fucking stoked i watched the vhs of my friends house. oh my god i watched it while it aired I, I might have done that because I remember taping episodes of Digimon on VHSs oh, and man. watching them. I watched it on Fox Kids while it aired, and I remember. Oh, yeah. We didn't have Fox Kids at the time. We had uh, YTV. That's probably, that's probably why. Yeah. It's probably airing oh, wait. Did we have Fox Kids? No, we did because I, I think we had Fox Kids, and I think I watched Digimon and Power Rangers Time Force on there. And then you'd switch over to watch Yu-Gi-Oh! Then I'd switch over to watch Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, that was in 2002, so I was I, I had moved by then so i i am trying i separate my life into like where i lived mm-hmm. so that's like a different arc to me i see i see yeah um i'm very but excited yeah. I'm very Once excited about this game. there's supposed to be like a couple more surprises before the release that they're gonna announce yeah you said that they have big news still yeah so i don't know what that is but that's cool who cares so just anything anything digimon anything. i love yeah. digimon i love digimon so much you know what should I make a definitive statement that I'll look back on and go, whoa, oh, geez, why? I'm going to say Digimon's my favorite of the monster th- franchises. I think I want from you. Yeah. I've, I have not asked a feature request of you. Okay. Yeah, shoot. I need top 10 Digimon. Oh, I can do that easy. I need top 10 Digimon. Number one. On my, he on done. my desk. On my desk. All right. Tomorrow. Who's that guy who goes, who's that stupid guy who goes, uh, the English one who goes, oh, he's like Elvis. Oh, Edimon. <laughs> the big monkey. Yeah, I love Edimon. Oh, Voiced my by God. Richard yeah. Uh, You know who I like? Metal Garu, Garurumon. Oh, when he turns into like the the Zoid. Mm, yeah, I like, my I like... favorites. I love Beelzemon because he has shotguns and a motorcycle. Oh. Um, and I love... I, I've always really liked Vimon's line ever since I saw the post. Oh, movie. V, yeah. Magnamon is yeah. Like right up. Oh, man. And Flame Drumon. And- Dude, Vimon's like the, like the epitome of cool, though. He, like, they marketed him as just this cool ass character. Oh, yeah, they did. And he did good. He did it. He was a good substitute for um, Agumon for sure. He was. And that's a hard act to follow up because Agumon fucking rules. Yeah. Yeah. He, he did. He did well. <laughs> you kind of agreed that. That Agumon, even Agumon was more um, mature, you know, in mm-hmm. some ways than Vimon. So Vimon uh, kind of attached. Vimon fit uh, Davis. Mm-hmm. That's his English. I'm just going to go with the English names. That's easier. That's he fit Davis perfectly. Yeah. Just as Agumon fit Taichi. Mm. Mm. Or Tai. Or Tai. I mean, I remember, I probably told this story on here, but I remember going to my friend's birthday party. And it was a Digimon party and it, it, there were official Digimon party supplies. So there was, we had a cardboard, like you strapped on your head and it was Ty's goggles and hair made out of cardboard. Oh my and, God. uh, we went to Chuck E. Cheese and we were all wearing tie head things. And I gave him a Digimon transformer cause they had ones that you could like Digivolve and he already got it from someone else. So I loudly yelled to my mom, does this mean I can keep it? And she was not happy about that. <sighs> what a Spencer to thing to say. What a Spencer thing. I was like say. four. Of course, of course, that was my first thought. I wanted to keep the gold Digimon toy. Greedy Spencer. Well, when you're four years old and your friend already has one, you think, hey, why not thought, slide Spencer actually, a little Digimon? Actually, that's a pretty good. That's, I mean, you did fine. You did fine. Um, but that said, that's all we have to talk about today. Yeah. Look for my top 10 Digimon post. Uh, I need it. On Noisy Pixel because it's going to be there. I can get it on my desk by Friday. I can do that. On my desk. On your desk. On your e-desk by Friday. Um, well, you you, you want to hype a game up? You want to give a hmm. any, any game you want to say? Is uh, what have I been playing recently? Um, well, uh, what have I played? Um, I don't know. I everything I, like I I don't know if I played anything since last week that's new. Yeah, me too. Because last week we talked about Yokai Watch and 
the 3ds shop and uh i was on the go for most of the week uh going to and from ottawa so i was just playing on portable things but i'm gonna i'm gonna start xenoblade chronicles 2 next so if you noticed i put a lot of manga reviews out i did see that i was going hard on it i gotta check the the website see what Mm. manga we got Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what what spencer manga reviews you can expect um i read this one uh from the red fog Ooh, he looks unhinged yeah he is he's a piece of shit oh that's all i have to say about zario gives him one bag of popcorn Mm, and a little knife keychain because he kills everybody because he's scary yeah but you it won't work because he's pretty uh he's pretty clever let's just say that there you go check out the review that said, uh, thanks everyone for listening to this very unqualified chat about video games. Hell yeah. Thank you all. I was sick this episode, so. Oh, that's okay. I caught You're fine. You, you did fine for a sick boy. Thank you. Thank you. And everyone, uh, raise your arms up, share your energy, make a, give make me a that, spear bomb to destroy give his spear, illness. Give me that spear bomb energy. Yeah. Save Azario. Thank you. I feel it. I feel it right now. All right. Bye. Bye, everyone.